And um, hello, everyone. This is your man, Mr. C, live, and I am here with the organizer of the Kindred Awards and Kindred Ministries. He's the founder of Kindred Ministries. Goes by the name of Tim Ewing, and uh, I am definitely uh, privileged uh, to be able to uh, have a, a, a conversation with him at this time. Tim, thank you for joining me. Thank you. The privilege is all mine. I've been following you for a while and you do an amazing job with what you do as well so it's equally just as, as much of an honor oh hey man hey man i appreciate the compliment um you know i've been watching you for a number <laughs> of years um i'm gonna i'm gonna ask some questions about your platforms but first mm -hmm. uh help me make it make sense some people get drawn into what they do say in your present uh snapshot of what you're doing by a specific event. Tell me what is that parallel activity uh, that basically, uh, I guess, ignited your activity with the with Kendrick Ministries and the Kendrick Awards? Well, basically, I started out, I went to school for youth ministry, and I had a, felt a call into youth ministry ever since I was in fifth grade. So my focus was always or my, I guess my calling was always toward young people and youth, but I also had, you know, a gift for music as well. I started playing the violin at five and my family was very musical. So I also had wanted to be a radio DJ for a number of years. So I was kind of like doing both at the same time. I went to school for youth ministry and for radio broadcasting. And I had a really prominent radio show for a number of years and met a lot of amazing artists. And that was kind of like my connection to the music side. And then I did full-time youth ministry for a number of years. I had four kids back to back and found that it was just too much to continue to do full-time youth ministry and kind of had to step back and kind of not do full-time youth ministry anymore. And that's when I kind of had to evaluate, uh -huh. how can I still fulfill my calling in youth ministry and not do the daily, you know, 24 seven job that I was doing at the church without burning myself out and ruining my family life. And so that's when God placed it on my heart that, I should use my background with the radio and all my connections with radio to try to form something that would, you know, still do that, but on a smaller scale. And that's when the idea for Kindred came about, where I would just go and partner with a local artist or musician that I had connected with and go into the community and provide the community with a free event. We would go to a park or we would go to a school anywhere is that we would be allowed to set up. We would just minister to the people that were there. And a lot of times they had no idea we were going to be there. And it was just a great opportunity to, to share the, the, the light and the gospel of Jesus through music to the, to the community, yeah. just, just, just by being there. And as I started to do these events with all the local artists, I just felt, you know, I was getting to know them more on a personal basis and hearing their, you know, feeling like they were doing a lot on their own. They didn't have a record label backing. They didn't have a lot of, opportunities to get their name out to get their music out and god kind of said mm -hmm. or placed on my heart that you need to do something for these local artists that are working really hard that have a great sound that have a great ministry that are putting in the work but just aren't having that opportunity and that's kind of where the idea of having an award show came about and initially i kind of fought with god and i said i've never been to an award show i've never done an award show i don't know anything about mm -hmm. how to even produce an award show and God said, if you right. trust me and and just do it, everything else will work itself out. And so I kind of just watched the, the major, you know, award shows like the Grammys and the Dove Awards and like all the prominent ones and just kind of saw how they kind of formatted their, you know, their, their scripts and how they kind of ran their shows. And I put together a mock script and I wrote it in like less than two weeks. I put the whole thing together in like a month and invited all the you know people that I wanted to nominate. Everybody was like, yeah, this is great. They all showed up. We did the year one and it went off so well that people were like, are you going to do this again next year? And I was like, well, let me pray about this. I'm just trying to be faithful. And as I kept, you know, you know, seeking God, God kept saying, keep going, keep going, keep going. And year after year, I started to kind of figure it out and get my feet in learning how I can, you know, make it better and better each year. And here we are, we just finished year eight. And um, I think that, you know, there's just def a definite need for it. And I wish that there was more markets that were focusing on the local independent artists because there's so much talent and so much opportunity that's missed on these artists that I just feel it's a shame that a lot of times the, the bigger markets don't want to touch them and, 
with it being 2023, I think that there's a platform for everybody. And I think that there should be more inclusion, especially in genres and styles that aren't necessarily heard or represented on the radio as it is right now. Okay. All right. So um, the radio journey that you had, was it, you know, like a folk sound? Was it, uh, you know, traditional gospel? Like, what kind of music was it? Or was it just, was it gospel? Or was it, was I played, it secular music? I played everything. So okay. it didn't matter to me what style or genre. I played everything from contemporary to rock to gospel to R and B to disco to swing to folk. Like, if it was, if I had a Christian message, if it was something that I thought had an edge or something that was different, that was catchy, that was fun, you know. Everything was on the table, and that's what made my show unique was because I wasn't afraid to play things that other people wouldn't touch. And I would play independent artists or people that you know nobody ever had a clue who they were. Like, I, I discovered so many artists, and that's not saying that I'm just this great person, but God had given me a gift for recognizing um, talent and people before they actually would pass, sometimes recognize it. And so for me, like, I could always tell who had that it factor and... I would always be able to be ahead of the curve in terms of music. So I would be playing stuff like four months before anybody else would catch on. And then people would be like, well, how did you know that that, that artist or that group was going to, you know, get to that level? And I was like, well, that was just, I just knew. And that was just an internal thing that God has given me the discernment to be able to, to, to decipher and to, to, to figure out as I was, you know, just kind of seeking different people to kind of play on my show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, of course, uh, with this eighth angle, that was my first time on the ground at your show. Now, I've also seen in previous years, I've seen your uh, your uh, your virtual or remote um, events as well. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my next question is, um, how did you um, pull together, um, or how, how, how did you find the niche to pull together so many great independent artists with the mainstream sound on your platforms? I just try, you know, for me, I'm very personable. So I message every single person or I try to reach out to them on an individual basis, whether it be through social media like Facebook Messenger or I'll email them or I'll, you know, try to like a lot of times like just through my connections through the different people, I, I just knew them personally. And so I would reach out to them and invite them to be a part of it. And as my connections with them and they felt more comfortable with me, then that's kind of how. I started to, to build those relationships and then they would tell their friends and then their friends would be like, Oh, Tim's legit. And this is reputable. And then it would just kind of like continue to kind of progress. And I would get to, you know, the artist that I really thought, you know, needed to, to be in that spot. And that's kind of how it, how it grew to, to where it is now. I just, you know, one, one okay. person at a time, text messaging them or messaging them or reaching out to them saying, Hey, you know, I'm here for you to help you wherever you, whenever you need to, you know, need me for anything, whether it be, you know, just giving you a CD review or just giving you feedback or whatever you need me for. I'm here to help to be a resource. Okay. Okay. Now, of course, people see the, the, the present day. They see, you know, um, in our own right, you know, we get to a place where it's an established look. You know, you have the big screens now and people have trophies in their hand now. Mm -hmm. It looks really, really good and, and it looks really presentable uh, with your platform. But of course, there's the challenging side and some of, I don't want to say the darker side, but some of the more, um, uh, I guess, personable, uh, stressful parts of the journey. Um, has, there ever, has there ever been a time where you felt like, I don't even know why I'm doing this and I'm just going to walk away? Every Can year. Can you tell me about that that ever happened? Every year. So it's, it's crazy because <laughs> with everything going on in my personal life, a lot of times I'm torn in 17,000 different directions. I have so many things on my plate and every time I want to quit, then I'll just put on a CD or I'll put on an artist that, you know, either was a nominee or that I've connected with and kind of gets me back in the reframe or I'll just take time to just go to God and be like, look, I'm tired. I'm doing this all myself. I've been praying for a team and I still don't have my team and I'm in year eight and I'm pretty much 99.9% .9 of the things that you see have been done by me, the editing, the reaching out to people, the emailing, the, you know, the whole production, everything is done by me. So it's literally a eight, nine month process from beginning to end to make sure that I can get everything done and to be to where it's at the level of excellence that it needs to be in order to, 
to, for, for me to be able to put it on the way that I think, you know, God will be honored. And it's also professional and representing the kingdom in the right way. Okay. Because I believe that uh, you only yeah. have one shot to reach somebody with what you're doing. If you put on a subpar production, then it's just going to put a bad light on and everything. And for me, like the artists that I'm representing are top quality. So I want to give them, you know, that same, you know, top quality as they have given to me with their music and their ministry. So I try to do whatever I can to make it as high professional and looking as, as best as I can to, to be product you know, for the production value to, to be that excellent because I want it to be something that people can be like, Oh wow, that's Christian. That's independent. And that, that, that's really, that's really solid. That's really spot on. And I want it to be something that's quality and high, you know, something that you can, you know, share with social media and not be embarrassed to share it. Amen. Amen. Um, can you say along the way, um, basically looking at the, all the artists and stuff, and I'm not trying to say you put one artist above the other. That's not where I'm, uh, what I'm trying to drive home with this question. Mm -hmm. But along the way, there is that unique, um, you know, something in a, an artist or a group. Um, that stands out and you say, you know what, you just take a step back and say, this is, this is pretty cool. And it makes it worthwhile doing this. Mm -hmm. Can you speak on uh, something like that that's ever crossed your mind? Well, that's where the Kindred Choice came about because um, the Kindred Awards is a fan based thing, but I found that sometimes the artists that really are deserving of the win didn't necessarily get the votes. And so that's when I was like, well, I want to be able to make, make sure that I recognize those people that, have that extra special something that maybe not have been discovered yet enough to get enough votes to win. Um, but I feel that they have that next level, you know, quality or is that extra something that just gives, you know, them just an extra appeal. And that's kind of like every year, my kindred choice is my personal favorites that I really think are extra, you know, deserving of being, you know, put in the spotlight. So that's kind of where the kindred choice came about. I'm actually glad you mentioned that because, you know, of course, you hear stuff like, you know, of course, uh, the categories and then the Kendra choice. Mm -hmm. And uh, some, you know, uh, some people might not understand the context behind it. So I'm glad you basically yeah, that's, made that that's clear. That's my personal choice that I pick every year. I try to pick like one or two artists that I really feel have just exceeded, you know, in terms of either with what they produced for that year or just over the course of their whole career. Um, that have that extra, you know, special, you know, pizzazz or that are unique enough to be different enough to, to catch the attention that, you know, they're they're doing something, you know, groundbreaking or unique or different that not everybody's doing. They're not being a copycat. They're not, you know, trying to follow their own trends like they're they're doing their own thing and they're they're succeeding and shining in it. You know, uh, for me personally, um uh, the one group to me, and, and, and it's not just because of the music, because of the um, their friendliness. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this year for me, it was um, um, I believe it was uh, John's John's Crossing. Mm -hmm. um, they are very very friendly and very very talented yes, band. Absolutely. And I was able to talk to them, you know, uh, throughout uh, you know the event. The um, I don't I'm not, I don't know all their names, but the uh, the female guitar player, yeah, very friendly. Very Christ-like. The uh, I believe the lead um, the lead uh, guitar player and the lead uh, uh, the director of the band. Mm -hmm. Very very friendly, and that's what makes it worthwhile. Your event. Um, I think what you do is um, it, it trickles down because you're very personable. Mm -hmm. You because you, you you mentioned that uh, uh, you know I'm glad I didn't like come out and say oh yeah because you know it's true. Yeah. Um, and I think it trickles trink down. And I think that's the one common denominator with a lot of the talent that came in uh, anywhere from. The superstars, like uh, a Lamont Sanders, mm -hmm. all the way down, if you will, not down like that, you know, because we're all, um, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, part of the body of Christ. But yeah. um, someone with less of a following, I'll just say, everybody was friendly, everybody was personable, and um, you know, that's one thing that I can say that stands out outside of the talent. Um, the level of, of, uh, of being approachable. And being friendly uh, really, really stood out in a powerful way, um, you know, at the award show. And that's another thing that I do. I do a lot of time to research the nominees that I, you know, put on the on the ballot every year. I don't just throw anybody up there. I try to really get to know them, get to know their personality, get to know are they plugged into a church? Are they what are they doing ministry wise? Are they active? Mm -hmm. And how are they, you know, you know, 
when they're not on stage because like, I believe that a lot of times sometimes you can see an artist on stage and they're you know these they're amazing and then when they're off the stage they're completely different I try to find people that walk the walk and talk the talk and are, are genuine and legit in terms of everything that they're doing so that they're not in it for themselves but you know if they have you know the, their motive is you know to ultimately to be a light in the community to share the gospel and to to use their gifts and talents for the kingdom Amen. Amen. Um, what determine like what, what factors are involved in you choosing a venue year to year? <laughs> Whoever can fit my budget and fit the amount of people coming, it's that's been my biggest challenge every year is finding a venue. I've outgrown five out of the eight places that I've gone to, and it's I guess a testament to the faithfulness of how God's been working through the you know the ministry of you know the award show, but that's always been the biggest struggle is finding a venue because I literally this year went to like 20 different places and either they weren't available or they wanted too much money. And like, I just base everything off of donations. So if I don't have the money coming in from, from generosity of others, then I'm just limited to what, to what I have. So that's kind of how it's, how it's been based is just off of what's been donated the previous years or the year that I, I do it. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, Wilmington was a good place. Um, so is, can you give us a hint as to where it's going to be next year? As far as like, uh, some of the, uh, candidates, I have not even started that yet. I pretty much in for like the first couple of weeks, I just kind of chill. And then once I get through, you know, getting back to normalcy of everything, then I start, I pretty much free search. Like I do every year. I just go through all the artists that I already currently have. And I just see, did they release anything throughout the year? So then once I figure out who's released stuff, I'm also looking for new artists. So on top of, you know, the original, the artists that I'm already established with, I'm always looking for new artists. So then once I kind of figure out who's released what in the year, then I kind of list them all, find out what genres and and categories they are. And that's kind of how I put the categories together. And then I try to find, you know, enough to fit in the category and then pray about it. And then ultimately it always ends up working out every year. So it's always, you know, I just give it to God and say, okay, here's, here's my list you know, help me to be able to discern and through the Holy Spirit, I always am able to kind of whittle it down because some categories there's like more and then some categories there's not enough and I have to kind of figure how I can be creative or or whatever. So it's it's always a process of whatever's released and, and kind of what the Spirit is telling me is how I kind of base it. You know, um, it's one thing I've noticed, you know, you mentioned about the Holy Spirit and God guiding you, and that's and that's a beautiful thing mm-hmm. um, that you know you you say that because sometimes people think of God, you know gospel shit was obvious, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately in today's time it's not that obvious. I mean, you know, even with uh, you know uh, gospel music, whether it be Christian rap, you know, CCM, mm-hmm. you know, the cloud chasing has become um, you know above and beyond um, ridiculous at times. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, I'm just glad that you you know you you shed light on how you, um, you know, basically, you know, uh, with your own process and with the help of God, of course, kind of, uh, you know, uh, dr- uh, you know, uh, strive uh, to uh, have a balance between the artistry and, you know, uh, character. And I, so in so, addition to me picking them, I also open it up and I put on Facebook and I email um, as many people as I can that I know are connected in some way to the award show. And I say, you know, if you know somebody that you feel is worthy of a nomination, uh, send me their name, send me their information, send me their website, send me their music so that way I can get a feel for them. And um, a lot of times, you know, that's the, the other way that I can you know, put together the, the, the list for the categories as well. That's, that's awesome. It's awesome that um, you strive to, um, I guess, uh, put partiality to the side. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's what I like about your platform. Um, many award shows, if you look at uh, many award shows, a lot of times, uh, if you look at the nominees, you see the same nominees. Say if there's six nominees, you might see the same three or four <laughs> nominees in categories like year after year after mm-hmm. year. And there's no there's no fresh blood. Because the talent's out there. You know, right. that's, that's undeniable. You know, and, uh, but I, think, just, I have to uh, some. I have to keep a somewhat of a consistency where I have like some artists that are there because if it's all new people, then 
nobody knows what's going on and then it's it's a train wreck or oh, you don't feel like but i try to have a nice balance that's why i have the new artist category i have i'm always trying to create new you know different things depending upon what's so it's it's always it's always fresh and and different every year it's customized each year based off of of what's been released i think it's a testament to your um to your discovery efforts mm -hmm. and in combination to the hard work of the artists because um you know needless to say a number of the artists that was you know nominated and or won at um on your award platform um i either have rapport or have a relationship with some of the talent yeah so to see them there it's like oh wow that's awesome you know because you know sometimes you're looking you know you're, when you, when you uh, navigate the um the scene the gospel music scene you might be assuming that you're going to see you know, these artists in one place, and you might not necessarily assume that you're going to see them even at the Kendrick Awards. Right. And I'm like, oh, oh, wow, it's Paradox. Oh, this Rush Shanks and Go Yee. Yep. Oh, wow, that's this person. Like, okay, that's, that, that to me, that was the, um, the cool part, um, being that I'm heavily involved in the, in the, in the Christian rap scene, mm -hmm. to see some of the brothers and the sisters um, you know, that I've rubbed elbows with over the years at some point, whether it be, uh, you know, uh, you know, remotely or otherwise, um, it's it, it's a real it's a real blessing. And like I said, it's a testament to their grind and their hard work. Not just being, if you will, exposed in um, what would be considered obvious platforms in our genre, but you know, uh, platforms like yours as well. So that, to me, I can really definitely say I appreciate that for you, for sure. And that's the bigger picture too. Is I want you to be able to see that there are other artists within the same neck of the woods, like from Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, New York. We're all connected, and we're only a couple hours away from each other. So the idea is for you to be able to network with these artists, or be like, "Hey, I met you at the Kindred Awards. You want to collab on a a song, or you want to do an interview for my radio show, or you know, I want it to be a resource where artists can come come together and to." I hate when I go to a, an event and I'm the only white person at it and there's the rest of the people are black and vice versa. Like I want to try to create a unity where it doesn't matter what skin color you are, what background you are, we can all come together and corporately support each other and corporately, you know, worship together. Cause there's so much, you know, unneeded, you know, kind of animosity amongst blacks and whites. And I don't, I don't understand why, like we should just be able to come together or it doesn't matter. Like, you know, why, why, why do we have to like segregate ourselves and only be, you know, supporting our room color? Like it's, it's ridiculous. So I'm trying to have that unity factor where, you know, everybody comes together. It doesn't matter. And I want to kind of change those stereotypes and try to change the way that people perceive, you know, how we do events, because as Christians, we're all part of the body. And I, mm -hmm. I just I feel like this is something that I shouldn't have to scream from a megaphone, but I guess I got to continue to to push harder because it's still not where I think it needs to be. And 2023 is almost over now, and we're going in 2024, and we're still, you know, still segregated and still fighting, and there shouldn't be any need for that. Amen, amen. And um, you know, I can you know say that uh, I've seen the evidence of that at your platform. Um, you know, and, you know, not just with the, uh, the different genres, uh, again, just with the, um, the conversations mm -hmm. and the, uh, the exchanging of pleasantries and exchange of ideas, yeah. because it's not just, you know, a color thing, you know, different, uh, you know, we all, you know, some, some people that are African American live in different, um, environments. Mm -hmm. And then of course there's, 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 there's the color divide or, you know, uh, the, the, the topic of color. So, um, you know, there's, there's still, there's still a long way to go, but I think we've come a long way at the same time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, um, I, I definitely was blessed by what I've seen. I believe you've done an amazing job to, um, you know, uh, basically with the help of the Lord provide a platform, um, shining a light in the area that says, Hey, you know, everybody can come together, you know, Christian rock, Christian rap, uh, uh urban contemporary. Uh, CCM, choirs, mm -hmm. um, you know, th these are some of the things that I saw that day, um, you know, and, and that I'm seeing, you know, constantly from the Kendrick Awards striving, but not just the excellence, but for the diversity, um, you know, uh, being showcased. And I know, um, beyond a shadow of a doubt, a lot of artists are, are definitely appreciative of that. 
And that's the other thing is a lot of times people, people don't even realize that these genres exist. And a lot of times they'll discover that they like a style that they wouldn't necessarily have listened to otherwise. And they're introduced to it at the Kindred Awards or they're introduced to an artist that they might have never heard of. And they're like, oh, wow, I like this. And I never would have thought about liking this because this isn't something that I normally would listen to. But I like it. And like I had somebody say to me, like, they never listened to rock, but now they're like the biggest rock band because they listen to John's Crossing. So like that's the bigger picture is like exposing, you know, a wide variety of different styles and, and showcasing that, you know, the body of Christ is more than just what you hear on the radio. Because a lot of times when you listen to the radio, it's either if you listen to like the K-Love, it's all CCM or worship. If you listen to like a gospel station, you don't get the diversity. So you don't get the the extra, you know, things that normally you would hear otherwise. So trying to, that's the other thing that I'm hoping that I can, you know, be an advocate is to change the way the radio is done. Because when, like I said, when I had my radio show, I was playing everything. It didn't matter what the style was. So I wish that more radio stations would pick up on the idea that there's more to life than just the five artists that you hit on repeat. And independent artists, right, right. you know, the, the national artists started out as independent artists too, but they just got the record label. And the independent artists, you know, they're just as equally talented. So why not give them a shot? Uh, so that's kind of like the big right. picture too, is trying to advocate to try to change the way radio is done to get the artists that don't have that, you know, that don't fit into that cookie cutter mold of the, the expectations of that, you know, radio station. So they don't get, they don't get any opportunities. So I want to try to push them to the spotlight to be like, these guys are just as equally talented. They have just as much right to be a part and to be, be heard as somebody that, you know, fits into that bubble, which those artists are fine, but there's more to the life than just those five artists that they hit repeat and repeat and repeat and the cookie cutter worship like that they produce. It's just, I'm, there's, there's more creativity out there that people don't realize is out there. And I'm trying right, to you right. know, bring that to the front and be like, look at these artists, look at these, you know, these people that are working super hard that have just an amazing sound and this is different and unique. And I think that this is something that you would enjoy. So that's kind of the bigger picture as well. Amazing. Amazing. Well, um, you know, Tim, I just want to just uh, thank you. I know you're very busy. <laughs> I know you just came off a, a very, uh, you know, a, you know, high level award season. I want to thank, thank you for taking, taking the time uh, to lend your perspective and, and, and delve into certain uh, backstories about your great platform. Um, do me one favor. T just tell everybody how they can get in touch with you or where they can go um, to check out uh, different things well, they can about go, uh, the Kindred Awards. They can go to the main webpage. It's kindredministries.us or facebook.com backslash kindredministriesnj. Or they can email kindredconcerts at gmail.com or the kindred awards at yahoo.com. And everything that is on the website, you know, is, you know, my phone number, my email is all there. So if they find the website, if you type it in Google, it comes right up the first, the first search thing. So if you type in kindred ministries or kindred awards, it'll come right up in, in the search engine. So that's the best way to be able to find everything. And everything's archived. So if people want to, see previous year's events like everything's all on youtube so you can just go to whatever year you want to see and see how it's been you know progressing over the years and how it's gotten from year one to year eight and you can see the the progression and how things have changed and improved and gotten to where it is now and then there's That's also cool. i'm also working on an artist database so hopefully within the next couple months then i can have that be a resource as well which will be like an a to z list of all the local artists that i'm connected with it'll have a link to their major like major web page or their their facebook page a way to be able to email them if you want to book them for an event or to be able to partner with them and that way you can kind of be like okay this person is from new york they're a rapper and i want to book them who can i go oh serious voice is a rapper from new york okay i like that or they can go down and say i need a rock group from new jersey and they can look through and they can find, you know, what they're looking for. It's all going to be like A to Z, so they can just find a way to, to make it easier for you to, to find new new music and also to find ways that you can bring in people that are local and they can support, you know, the local music scene through through that database as well. Hey, man, that's awesome. So um, I definitely know that, uh, you know, that's me included, that we're all looking forward uh, to great things to come from uh, Kendrick Ministries and the Kendrick Awards and other, uh, you know, uh, platforms that uh, that's connected to you. 
Uh, well, Tim, once again, I, I thank you for taking the time. Yeah. It's definitely a good fellowship with you and uh, you know having this conversation. Absolutely, I appreciate you as well. Continue to do All right. what you do because we need more of what you do. Oh, I, 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 as long as God has me, I'll, I'll keep doing it. All right, sounds like a plan. Have a great rest of your night. Are right, you do the same? God bless you. Bye bye. All right, all right.